Essentially, the personal statement is all about showcasing your life experiences and portraying your unique story to all the admissions committees. Welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Austin. I'm a current medical student and I provide valuable advice, tips, and strategies to help all of you succeed in the field of medicine. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about one of the most important pieces of the medical school application and that is your personal statement for medical school. If you're still interested in learning more about MCAT strategies, I talked about that in my past series of videos and you can find that on my channel and I'll additionally link those up here. But the coming weeks we'll be talking about the medical school admissions process beginning today with one of the most important pieces and that is how to write an effective personal statement. Alright everyone, so we're kicking off our new series about the medical school admissions process with one of the most important pieces of your application and that's the personal statement. So if you don't want to miss out on any of these videos that are going to be coming out, please make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell for consistent notifications. If you're applying to US medical schools, then there's three main application services. There's the AMCAS application for MD medical schools, the ACOMAS application service for DO medical schools, and then an application service called the TMD SAS, which is specific to the state of Texas, their public MD and DO programs. So whether you're applying to just one, two to three, or maybe all three, they will all require a personal statement. The core of the personal statement is essentially why every applicant wants to become a physician. Now there's a little bit more that's gonna go into that and we're gonna talk about that in a minute, but first I wanna just quickly go over the structure of the personal statement. So whether you're applying via AMCAS, ACOMIS, or TMDSAS, there's going to be a character limit. So specifically for AMCAS, this is 5,300 characters including spaces. And now recently, as of this video in 2020, the ACOMIS DO application service has also increased its word count up to 5,300 characters. I think this is because they want to encourage more people to apply to both MD and DO programs as the degrees are becoming more and more similar. Now for the TMDSAS, the limit is just 5,000 characters including spaces. So you will have to do a little bit of tweaking when you apply to TMDSAS Texas Public MD and DO schools if you choose to do so, but you can use the same essay for MD and DO schools. Now of course there are going to be some exceptions to this rule. You might not just put the exact same essay you did in your AMCAS into your ACOMAS application service, but my point here is that whether you're applying through AMCAS, ACOMAS, or TMDSAS, the personal statement is a vital piece of your application and the central theme in each of those essays are going to be the same and that's why you want to be a physician and what brought you to that decision. So now we're going to break down the personal statement paragraph by paragraph and I'm going to help you structure it in a way that's going to be effective into helping you write your personal statement. So I think something that makes the personal statement challenging for a lot of students is that because it is so broad and you have to talk about yourself and that can be very hard especially if you've never taken that time to think about why exactly you do want to become a physician. So my first piece of advice before you start writing your personal statement is to take some time, jot down ideas, and think about the reasons that really have drawn you to the field of medicine and why you want to pursue it. And once you get that train of thought moving, then I think it'll be easier to structure your essay. And now for the next part of this video, I'm going to be walking through my personal suggestions for how you can start your essay, move through each paragraph, and then conclude your essay. This is by no means saying that this is a 100% success formula or anything like that, but if you don't know where to start, I recommend this as a good starting point for you when you're writing your essays. And of course, at the end, I'll talk about how your first draft is going to look nothing like your final draft. And that's because we're going to go through an extensive revision process throughout your writing of your personal statement. So this is a great starting point, and we're going to start with the introduction next. So, of course, at this point, you've written many essays in your lifetime, so many people will know that you want to start with some sort of an attention getter. And this is still true for your personal statement. I think a lot of times students sometimes just go ahead and start with the phrase like, I want to be a physician because, etc, etc. And you don't want to start your personal statement like that because think about the admissions committees who have read countless essays over and over again. If you start something so boring or simple as that, they're just going to quickly skim over your essay. You're not really going to get that same effect as if you pull them in and actually drew interest from the reader. 
So in your introduction, I would recommend you take a time to think about that first instance when you decided that you were interested in pursuing a career in medicine, because that's going to be your starting point for your essay. And then each paragraph following the introduction will be adding different types of experiences that have helped grow your desire to pursue medicine. And then ultimately, we're going to get to the conclusion, where we tie everything together and end it on a power statement. So to help you get a better understanding about a good attention getter and how to just open up your essay, think about different ways you can phrase a story or a situation. Um, for example, I'm not going to share my entire personal statement here on this video, but maybe in a future video I can cover more about my background, how I chose to enter the field of medicine. But my first desire or thought to pursue medicine actually came when my mom experienced a near-death experience in the hospital. And, you know, I'm not alone in that situation. You know, there are many people and many that are in the field of medicine are not even applying that have experienced a traumatic situation in the hospital. So that's not going to make me unique, but it's my perspective and the way I portray my experiences and how it impacted me that's going to make me a unique applicant. So I started my essay when I applied to medical school with the date that it happened and I said I would never forget that day. So my first sentence I remember was on September 8, 2007, this is a day that I will never forget. Now that's a sentence that when admissions committees read that, they're even going to be intrigued and interested into, okay, what happened on this day? What's going on? Let's read more. Let's find out more. Instead of me just saying, I want to become a physician because my mom experienced a near-death experience and that impacted me to pursue medicine. Like, that's something that's just going to be read right over because they see this stuff all the time. So take a step back and think about it from a different perspective and try to portray your story in a way that's interesting but still tells your thoughts and your perspective. Now, following your introduction, you're going to be going into your first paragraph of your personal statement. And now this is an important time to recognize that while the idea of pursuing medicine had just begun in your introduction, now you're going to talk about the experiences and the growth that you had from that point on that brought you to the position that you are in today when you're applying to medical school. So using my example again about what I experienced as a child, I was only nine years old or so at the time and I remember that that was when the idea of medicine started but it was really through what I did in high school and my undergrad experiences in college that helped shape and mold me into the individual that I was when I applied into medical school and decided that this was the profession and career that I really wanted to be a part of. So in the same way, when you're thinking about crafting your story in your personal statement, start with the starting point in the introduction and now move through each paragraph and talk about how your interest for medicine started to grow as you pursued different experiences, as you began shadowing in a hospital and you had different interactions with patients directly, or you had an aspiring physician that you really looked up to that you worked with. And that was something that helped bring you to medicine. Whatever it might be for you, use those different experiences and tie and draw in different things that might be outside your application and really show your story. This is your opportunity to show how you're unique and the different things that you have done in your life will really make you a truly remarkable physician. So my number one piece of advice for when you're constructing your body paragraphs is to not just describe the experience, but let the readers into your mind. What I mean by this is to show them your unique thoughts and perspectives through each experience and activity and how you grew into the person that you are today because of these activities. So once you've arrived at the conclusion of your personal statement, this is arguably one of the most important paragraphs. It's going to be the last piece of your personal statement that the application reader looks at before they move on. And so you want to leave a lasting and strong impression on the application committee. So the goal of your conclusion should be to tie in all the experiences that you talked about in your body paragraphs and your introduction and put it all into a power statement. Tell the reader why you want to be a physician and also what you're going to do when you have that platform when you get there. Because if you show that you have a goal and an ambition, that you've looked ahead and taken that time to think, that not only tells me why you want to be a physician, but also gives me a better understanding of what you're going to do when you get there and by you telling me what you're going to do that also gives me a better understanding of why you want to be a physician. For example, if you have a strong commitment to social justice and serving impoverished or marginalized communities, say something like, as a physician I'll have the platform to impact marginalized or impoverished communities in a different way than I have as an undergrad or you know, as a volunteer. Talk about some ways you can do that and then say, now this is why I want to be a physician because I know that I want to make this type of impact in the field of medicine and I know that being here at this medical school will help me get to where I want to be. 
it shows you're not short-sighted but it's also humble and modest that you're not saying you're gonna be this amazing or great physician or anything like that but you're willing to learn and get there and you have a goal that you're trying to reach in this journey so that brings us to the conclusion of the personal statement and then we broke it down into three coherent pieces your introduction your body paragraphs and your conclusion so just remember the goal of the introduction is to establish that initial time point where you originally wanted to be interested in pursuing the field of medicine and then your body paragraphs are what really walk us through that growth that you had into where you are today and finally your conclusion will wrap up all those experiences into one coherent closing paragraph and then you're going to end it on that power statement that really connects with the reader and shows them why you want to be a physician what you're going to do when you get there and why you should be accepted into medical school all right so now you finish that whole piece that we talked about you have an intro concluding paragraph body paragraphs all of it so you're done you can just submit now right not quite so when you get to this point you should congratulate yourself you have a great first draft but it's nothing more than a first draft so what's really important about the entire process of writing your personal statement is to not rush it and to take your time. Honestly, it's a one to two month process. When I started applying to medical school, I remember starting my personal statement in March. That was my spring break. And I was working on that personal statement all the way up until I submitted my application in June. So it's something that you're going to keep working at and you always want a pair of fresh eyes to take a look at it. So whether that's a pre-med advisor or just anyone you trust that can take a look at your paper and try to understand it better. Remember, you're trying to relate to the reader. So even if that person is not related to the field of medicine or has never read a personal statement before, they can still give you valuable insight and different perspectives into how you can improve your writing. So it's going to be a little bit of back and forth. And don't be afraid to accept criticism to improve your writing each and every step of the way. Overall, I hope this video was really helpful for all of you in getting started on how to write your personal statement. I think the first step is really just getting your ideas on paper and then working from there to edit and improve your personal statement. So remember, it's a process. So a key takeaway is that you can't just bang it out in one sitting. I think a lot of times medical students want to just get an assignment and get it done as efficiently and effectively as possible, but that's just not going to work for the personal statement, unfortunately. So remember when it comes to medical school admissions, I think there's really three pillars and other advisors and faculty that I've worked with on admissions committees would agree that it's your MCAT and GPA, your personal statement, activities and experiences, and then your interview. So you can't just spend all this time on one side of the pillar and not the other two or two and not all three. So what I'm saying is a lot of students like to spend all their time on MCATs and GPAs because that's all they talk about and I think that's all there is to admissions. But remember, there's still the interview portion, this, the personal statement with all your activities and your experiences as well. So what I'm saying with this is that if you spend three to four months working on your MCAT, what's one to two months working on a personal statement and putting your best foot forward? So keep that in mind as you go on and you begin writing your personal statement. And I wish all of you the best of luck in this process and I'm here to help you if you need it. Finally, with the admission cycle opening up in the next weeks to months, I want to offer my time to you and read your personal statements to help all of you improve your chances to getting accepted into medical school. All I ask is that you subscribe to my channel right here and also join my Facebook group where you can message and chat with other pre-med students about anything related to the field of medicine. So if you show me that you subscribe to my channel, join my Facebook group and invited three friends to join the group on Facebook, you can go ahead and message me on that group online and send me your personal statement and I'll get that back to you as soon as I can. So this is going to be on a first come first serve basis but my spring break is next week and since my vacations got cancelled i'm hoping that i will have more time to help all of you out so that's all there is for today if you want me to read your personal statement just feel free to subscribe join my facebook group and invite three friends this is just going to help me reach more people and give me a better way to impact others so i really appreciate you doing that thank you for staying tuned stay safe and enjoy the rest of your week